Tonight is uh, December the 27th, 2014. I've been asked uh, several times about my bias probe. I'm going to make a quick video, try to keep it down to five or six minutes. Here's a schematic of it that I drew up. Hold it steady so you can pause and look at it if you so desire. That's it right there. I've got my high voltage signs on it and everything because there is high voltage on pin three and four which is the plate and the screen. The cathode, there's no high voltage there. But this plug right here, this male plug, plugs in place of the tube and then the tube of course plugs in here. Well, I'll, I'll plug it in and show you. Uh, pin one of here goes to pin one here, two to two. Pin three of here goes here to the uh, to the plate and then it goes over to here uh, to the socket and then this switch right here shorts it. See I've got it labeled as down and up and it says up short down is open so when it's when they're all uh, up or shorted then these are jumpered. hope that makes sense and then pin 4 comes over to here and then this one goes to pin 4 of the socket and this shorts them and same thing with pin 8 which is a cathode and they're labeled plate screen and cathode uh, and there's what it looks like. It's pretty simple. You can see how the red is the plate, the orange wires are the screen, and the blue wires are the uh, cathode, and then the three little switches there at the bottom, the short amount. Pin 5 right here is the control grid. I did shield it. It's uh, just to keep it from hopefully going to any kind of howling and oscillation. And then over here, the shield over here is, is connected to pin 8, which is the cathode. <coughs> pretty much it. Not much magic to it, but it does allow you to measure all the parameters of the tube. So let's measure a tube. Okay, I believe it's sufficiently warmed up. I've got the uh, the meter in uh, milliamps. Got the, uh, this is a little homemade test plug. Same thing on, on each end. Being a digital meter, I don't even see any, so it knows it's missing the probe plug it in and uh, being careful because there's high voltage out there plug your uh, plug it into the plate see it's actually measuring just a little bit because the, the switch doesn't completely short it but that that's okay and then all we do to measure the plate current is then unshort that switch that unshorts the uh, the red lead and we measure uh, 71 milliamps which is about right, which is right for a 6550 in this uh, Dynaco Mark III amp. So we write it down. 71 point, mm, what's it measuring? Three milliamps. And then we make sure we short it. We close the switch before we pull the, the probe out. Because I believe that if you open up the plate, if you open this up, with the tube in an operating condition like it is now, I believe you'll destroy your tube because the uh, the highest potential is going to be on the screen. I think uh, you want to make sure that anytime you plug this, pull this out, or don't have it plugged in, that all of them are closed. And then we go to the screen, and then we open up the screen here, and there's our screen current. See, it's measuring negative over here because that's just way I've got it turned around. If you're using an analog meter, of course, the meter would be going that away, so you'd have to you'd have to turn this around. But that's measure 5.9. 5.9 milliamps. Close our switch, being always very cognizant that we're dealing with high voltage. Then in the cathode, open that one up. We got 77, let's see, well let's settle down a minute. <clears throat> Call that 77.3, 77.3. Now, we all know that the cathode current is the sum of these two, right? Well, it's not exactly. It's close. If you add these together, let's see, what are we going to get in this case? 9, that's going to be 12, carry 1, 5, 6, 7. Well, that's about as close as you can get. I've seen it very slightly. So the sum of these, the plate and the screen, comes out to be... Point one off, and that's that's an acceptable error 
just in our measurements. So now you know actually a lot about your tube. Then you close the switch. And of course, we're going to unplug it. We'll test the other tube. Well, no, we won't do that. That'll just make the video long. You're going to see the same thing. But it tells you just about everything you can know about your tube. And it also tells you that, that this socket right here is good. That means like the screen resistor to it or whatever it happens to be. I know this one doesn't have a screen resistor because it's ultra linear. But then you could measure uh, both tubes one at a time in this socket. Then you could actually move it to the other socket and measure it. It's going to tell you if your sockets are good. It's going to tell you just about all you can know about your tube, so uh, I hope that helps. That's my little bias probe. It's a little uh, labor intensive because it only does one at a time. I suppose you could, uh, you know, build a fancy one if you ended up with a bunch of these. You could build one with a quad in it or whatever. Four sockets, a bunch of switches. Maybe uh, not even use a meter like this. Maybe just get yourself a milliamp meter. You know, build it all into one uh, box. You could uh, you could uh, do it however you want. You do have to be careful though. There is high voltage out here and here. Now the safer ones just put a resistor in the cathode circuit, and then you measure the voltage across the resistor. It's usually a 10 ohm resistor, and you can determine the uh, cathode current from there. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly good. But this is uh, actually putting the milliamp meter current meter in series with the plate, the screen, and the cathode, so it's uh, it's spot on. Hope this helps. Be careful if you build one. And like I say, don't open these switches, especially the plate, with without a, uh, a load across it, your milliamp meter. I, I think you very well may damage your tube, so be careful.